afternoon. I want to share something with y'all that uh, I've been looking at, man. It's really been a blessing my life. An incredible scenario. And uh, it's the fact that, man, uh, what you believe and then the intensity or the tenacity with which you believe, it does matter. Now, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, it says this. Uh, this is uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. It says, so, Whatsoever is born of God is victorious over the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. Faith is a word that we hear a lot about uh, in the body of Christ, and you even hear some, some squabbles about faith, about people... Uh, who uh, say that there is a faith movement or this person is a faith preacher and this, that, and the other. And I think more than anything, it's, it's the squabbles about uh, the way some of the people preach it. But you, we can't argue with what the Bible says. So the Bible clearly says that, uh, that uh, there's a reward when we have confidence in God. Uh, there's another scripture that says right over here in First uh, John chapter 5, verse 15. It says, and since... We positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask. We also know with settled and absolute knowledge that what we have granted to us is our present possessions. The requests are made of him. So it says so we know that, that, that God listens to us. And because he, if he listens, then he grants what we ask because he's listening to us. There's a, another passage in the Bible in the book of Mark chapter 5 where it talks about the woman that had the issue of blood. And uh, it's a familiar story to, to a lot of people, but it says that Jesus was on the way uh, to this one guy's house, and the guy had came and got Jesus because he heard he was a healer, and he said, man, my daughter's at home, and she's really sick. And uh, he said, I believe if you come to my house, and you you know, you know lay hands on her, you pray for her, I believe my daughter's going to be made well. So Jesus said, man, let's go. So they were on the way, and the Bible says that uh, there was a crowd of people all around Jesus, and uh, and this one woman, she broke through. Uh, to Jesus and the Bible says that she had been bleeding for 12 years she'd been to all kind of doctors and she had been none better nothing that any doctor could do for her could make her condition better but the Bible says that she touched the hem of his garment and the Bible says that immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up she was healed when she touched his garment now there's a couple of things that stand out in that situation one of the things is that Jesus, the Bible doesn't say that Jesus stopped and looked at her and made a big speech and said, I pick you out and choose you to be healed. The Bible says that there was a crowd of people all around him, all kinds of people touching him. But it says that that one woman, Jesus, virtue went from Jesus and Jesus stopped at the touch of that one woman. And he turned around to her and he said, daughter, he said, your faith, your faith has made you whole. He didn't say, I, I choose you out this day to heal you. Matter of fact, Jesus would have walked right by that woman. But Jesus came out of, out of his own mouth, written in red in your Bible. He says, woman or daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. The point I want to make in that situation is that God tells us to believe only. He says, if we believe, then we'll see the glory of God. There can be all kinds of people making a big fanfare about God and hanging around God and hanging around church. But let me tell you something. There was a bunch of fanfare around Jesus that day, but it was only one person who made up their mind and to believe God that if I could touch him, that I'm going to have faith, that, I, that I'm going to be healed. And she touched the hem of his garment, and the Bible says that it was her faith, his power, but it was her faith in his power that, that got her healed. And I'm going to tell you something. The biggest thing that the devil wants to do is get you to a place to do whatever it takes to get you to get fed up with God and believe God don't care about you and believe God's not answering you and that God's not going to do nothing about your problem because he can get you to forfeit the victory that God has for you that we read in John chapter, uh, the first John 5, 4. He says, and this is the victory that overcomes anything in this world, your faith. And if the devil can get you to the point where he can get you to doubt and he can get you to give up uh, while you're waiting on God to do what, he, what you need God to do, then he can steal the victory from you. He can steal from you what God's trying to get to you. So you make up your mind that you're going to hold fast. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to make up their mind that they were going to hold fast. Do you, 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 you don't think that they knew that they were in a bad situation messing with the king? You don't think that they felt that fire getting hotter while they was on the way? But they didn't say, okay, okay, we quit. We give up. You know, we give in. We ain't. We, we, we'll bow down. They said, no, take us on into the fire. And let me tell you something. Because they wouldn't quit, 
even when the heat got turned up, the Bible says that Jesus Christ was in the fire and he saved them and to the point that when they got they came out of the fire, they wasn't even smelling like smoke. And the only people that got a negative outcome was the ones jacking with them who threw them in there. So you keep your faith. Even if it's, I'm talking about the hottest, if it's the last day, you hold on to your faith because Jesus Christ is going to meet you in the fire and he's going to bring deliverance in your situation. God bless you, man. God loves you and don't you let nobody talk you out of that. Amen.